Hi, this is John. This video is on painting rockets with automotive paints. Most rockets are painted with spray paints because they're easily available, relatively easy to use, and you can get good results. With more work and more equipment, you can get even better results with automotive paints. So in preparation for talking about automotive spraying, let's review how rattle cans work. The nozzle, like everything else about the can, is disposable. This is the problem because ideally the nozzle is a precision part. The paint is dispensed by pressurized gas contained within the can itself. The paint is a one part liquid because it needs to remain ready to use for an extended period of time. Now let's compare that with a spray gun. All the parts are reusable so it can be made much higher quality. The nozzle is steel, adjustable, and even switchable with different orifice sizes. The paint is mixed immediately before use, so two part paints can be applied and a lot more colors are available. The pressure to dispense the paint comes from an external air compressor, again through an adjustable inlet. Now we can see where all that extra equipment comes in. Not only do we need a gun, we need an air compressor, and we also need to filter the air between the two. The air from the air compressor is much higher pressure than we'll use and also may contain water vapor. So first thing we need to do is remove any moisture. Then the pressure needs to be dropped to the right amount for the gun. And then finally it can be delivered for spraying. So the rocket I'm using as an example is my Mad Cow AGM Pipe 5 inch. Of course I'm going to paint the whole rocket, but this video will focus on the nose cone just so we have a simpler piece that we can follow through step by step. Many fiberglass nose cones come with a removable aluminum tip. You can either paint this in place or take it off. I'm going to choose to take it off because I want the tip to remain this metal color, not match the rest of the nose. So first of all, we want to start with a clean part. So I like to use water and a good hand cleaner to scrub off whatever can be taken off by a polar solvent like water. Later on we'll be cleaning this with other organic solvents, but water can remove mold release and other material that other solvents don't remove as well. Of course with any paint job, the quality of the result depends on the amount of effort you put into preparation, priming, filling, and sanding. This rocket was painted with spray paints, and you can take a look at my previous painting video for tips. In this video, we're going to focus on techniques of automotive spraying. This nose cone needs a lot less work because the fiberglass is basically ready to go. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper to give it some tooth for the primer to stick, and then we're ready to go with our first coat. Because these fiberglass tubes are pretty much ready as is, all I did was sand them a little bit with 320 grit and wipe them down with alcohol. And the last bit of preparation is to mask off any parts that you don't want to get primer on. It's also important to mask off holes from the inside because the primer will get in and create overspray on the inside of your tubes. One of the really nice things about auto paints is you have so many choices because all the components are individual. For priming, I like to use high build primers. One coat is plenty for tubes, but if you have irregularities such as fiberglass weave, pinholes, or little remnants of seams, they fill quickly with a high build primer. And of course, the corresponding downside of auto paints is the extra equipment. In this case, you probably want a separate gun for primer with a large nozzle because of the high solids in the high build primer. Typical nozzles are 1.8 millimeter and larger. Here I'm using a 2.0 millimeter nozzle. Now before we start actually spraying, we want to make sure we can turn the parts, either using a lazy Susan or turning them by hand, but we don't want to touch the part once we start spraying. And after the last time we touch with our hands, wipe the parts down with alcohol and a lint-free cloth. Notice I'm already wearing gloves. I don't want to get fingerprints. I don't want any oil or dust or any contaminants on the tube. Now that we're ready to go, it's time to mix our primer. This is a polyester primer, so there's a large volume of primer itself and a small amount of MEK hardener. 
So here I'm adding the MEK, one quarter of this little tube to correspond to the one cup out of one quart of the primer itself. And of course we need to stir it thoroughly. It makes it a lot easier if you mix your primers and your paints into a cup that's at least twice as large as what's needed for the volume that you're mixing. And now we're ready to pour the primer into the cup. Note that I'm not bothering to filter it because high build primer would just clog a filter. And now we're finally ready to spray. Adjust your gun as necessary. Again, for primer, this isn't super critical. Air, material. And then you're ready to start spraying. Take even strokes about 10 inches away from the part and make sure that you're getting good coverage, but not too much material on the part. I like to use a vertical fan adjustment and go side to side from the top to the bottom. Note how quickly the primer goes on and how it produces a solid surface in one coat. And here's our part after that one coat of primer is applied. Of course, another cost of this great result is the need to clean the guns after each use. Once the primer is cured, take it outside and examine it in bright light for imperfections. Use a pencil to mark anything that needs filling because it's much easier to see outside than inside. As far as filler goes, many products work. Lots of people like Bondo. I personally prefer this Super Fill, which is basically a lightweight epoxy. Apply filler to any scratches or dings. Again, it's much easier to see with the pencil marks than it would be to try to find these again indoors. You can either scrape off the excess with a soft scraper or leave it on and sand it off. As long as your filler is lightweight, sanding will be easy. Then repeat this prime, fill, sand, prime cycle as long as you have the patience for. The more you do it, the better your final result. When we're working with waterproof materials, Instead of usual dry sanding, we can do wet sanding. Wet sanding is better because it takes less effort, you don't have any debris in the air, and you get a more even result. We're going to use a series of four grits to finish the primer. We'll start with 220 grit, move to 320, 400, and then finally 600 grit. When wet sanding, we just want a dribble of water. Wet the part and wet the sandpaper and gently sand the surface. You want to be particularly careful when sanding with the 220 that you don't go through the primer. And then re-wet the part to rinse off the dust regularly as you go around. Thoroughly wash the part between each finer grit and you can use a little more pressure with the super fine grits, but you shouldn't need to. Gentle pressure will help you feel when you're done. At first there'll be more friction, but as you get done with that grit, the paper will slide over and there won't be any more that you can get out of it. Once you're done sanding down to 600 grit, the surface should be matte, completely smooth and uniform. And of course, in terms of color, is where automotive paints really give you options. Every color is mixed to order, so theoretically any color is possible. The base coat is separate from the clear coat, so you have even multiple choices of clear coat as long as you remain compatible with the base coat system. 
Typically, you'll want a separate gun for finishing, although you could use the same gun with different nozzles. For finishing, you're going to want a finer nozzle, typically 1.3 to 1.4 millimeters. One really tricky thing to get right is air pressure. The gun manufacturers tell you that you should have 8 to 10 psi at the tip, but that means a higher pressure here and an even higher pressure back at the regulator. So you have to experiment with spraying to get the right pressure. Google for videos on YouTube to find good examples. I've also linked one or two on my page. Now when we're ready to paint, it's really important that we clean the parts thoroughly. Any little imperfections of dust will cause fisheye and other blemishes in the finished surface. So clean it very carefully. When you're mixing paint, make sure to get the right ratio. Typically, each stage uses a different ratio. For this system, the base coat is one to one with reducer. You also need to thoroughly stir the paint, which is why it's nice to use a cup that's substantially larger than the amount you're mixing. We also definitely want to use a filter in this case to make sure we avoid any little particles or other foreign substances getting into the paint. Adjusting the gun by test spraying is extremely important. The gun pattern I usually leave about three quarters open and don't mess with it much. The needle control adjusts so that you get a good solid coat but no dripping or running. Air pressure is the most important and getting the air pressure right is key to a good finish without orange peel. Once you have everything set up properly, spraying is just a matter of even strokes and remaining about the same distance from the part. You want a single wet coat at a time. Wait five minutes or more according to the instructions and recoat once. You can recoat more, but I find that two coats is usually plenty. I painted the switch band metallic silver and here you can see what that base coat looks like after it's been sprayed. And then after half hour, or whatever your paint system recommends, it's time to do the clear coat. Always check the mix ratio because it's different for each part. In the case of these clears, it's four parts clear to one part curative. Adjust the gun using test spraying again for the clear because it will have a slightly different viscosity. Spraying the clear is just more of the same. Just take your time, make sure you have a good wet coat, wait for the appropriate amount of time, a second wet coat, and then you're done with the part. I've shown solid colored parts here, but of course all techniques of masking and multicolor painting, as I demonstrate in my simple painting video, work fine with automotive paints. And so here it is, with the metal tip installed and the shoulder. I hope this gave you an idea of what's involved in painting with automotive paints. It's a lot more work and a lot more expense, but you have a lot more options of finishes. You've also probably noticed that I've been wearing this crazy headgear through most of the video. Paints, whether rattle cans or automotive paints, have a lot of nasty chemicals in them, so be careful when working with them. Make beautiful rockets and stay healthy.